Today, we're gonna take a look back in time as I'm gonna walk you through every single generation and give you the entire history of one of the most legendary football boot silos to ever be made. We are, of course, talking about the Adidas Predator. But today, I'm gonna let you know how the DNA of this new bad boy, the Predator 18 Plus, originates all the way back to 1994. But to do all this, of course, I need to be properly dressed. Much better. It all started with this guy, the OG Adidas Predator. Now, the idea behind Predator originated from former footballer Craig Johnston, who wanted a football boot inspired by the grippy texture on a table tennis bat. So he developed the idea and later sold it to Adidas, who engineered these aggressive rubber fins into a kangaroo leather upper. And it gave you tons of swerve and power in your shot. It also weighed a ton though at 391 grams. But as they said, 100% legal, 0% fair. In 1995, Adidas refined the Predator by introducing the Rapier, which adjusted the swerve elements just a little bit, but more importantly, introduced the fold over tongue to cover up the area where you tie your laces and clean up the striking surface. Again, just a little bit. And fun fact about this boot is, that it was the first boot ever to be made in multiple colorways. That's nice and all, but it still weighed the same as Mount Everest at 385 grams. 1996 became the year of the Predator Touch, which David Beckham so famously wore when he scored that epic goal from halfway line against Wimbledon. But the boot itself was also important because Adidas introduced the red fold over tongue for the first time ever. And also, they trimmed down on the rubber swerve elements to make the boot a little less chunky while still maintaining that awesome power and grip you got on the ball. And it was a cool boot, but it still weighed the same as a tank. 389 grams. How times have changed. Fast forward to 1998 and the Predator Accelerator, which came in two generations and is probably one of the most beautiful looking football boots I have ever seen. Look at these big wavy stripes. Ugh. But anyways, on the tech side of things, Adidas actually introduced their traction sole plate. This sole plate with bladed studs to give you a more aggressive traction in the ground. They also introduced the feet you wear outsole and insole to give you a more anatomical and comfortable fit. But even more importantly, they actually trimmed down the rubber elements once again, making them completely flat and integrated into the upper itself. And then they also gave you an asymmetrical lacing system to give you a bigger, cleaner, larger striking surface so you could really connect with the ball and be lethal. This weighed 331 grams, so it was pretty big progress for the Predator. And you might all remember Zidane wearing these, winning the World Cup in 1998. Beautiful. But with the coming of the new millennium, Adidas brought us the Predator Precision in 2000. And here, it was time for a big groundbreaking innovation, because they introduced a longer fold over tongue that would actually stay in place instead of just flying all over when you were kicking the ball. And all because of one little thing. Velcro. <laughs> yeah, so Velcro was the pinnacle of innovation <laughs> back in 2000. But uh, it worked pretty well until it got dirty and it wouldn't stick anymore. But anyway, Adidas also kept the concept of having the rubber swerve elements integrated into the upper itself. But here they actually wanted to make the upper even softer and more pliable so they trimmed down the elements even more, making these areas of ripped rubber fins to still give you that grip and power and connection with the ball, but to simply make the boot more streamlined. And as a last thing, they also introduced the extraction studs that were actually interchangeable and probably also large enough to kill a man. 2002 World Cup year and the Predator Mania, probably the most iconic Predator off them all. And here, you got a big fold over tongue with none of the Velcro nonsense. Instead, it had an elasticated rubber band to keep it in place. Also, Adidas introduced a heel counter first and foremost, but also a split outsole to keep it as the lowest weighing predator at the time, 325 grams. And also, 
They engineered it so the rubber swerve elements only covered the inside of the forefoot, leaving the upper even softer than it was on the Predator Precision. And I don't think I need to say any more than this. Champions League final, Real Madrid Leverkusen, Zinedine Zidane. Amen. Two years later, and it was time for the Euros and for the Predator Pulse to see the light of day. And here Adidas introduced their Power Pulse technology, which was basically a weighted 40 gram brick that sat underneath the forefoot of the insole to give you more weight and power behind the ball when you were shooting. Also, the Adidas Predator Swerve elements were now just six rubber fins on the inside of the boot, meaning a whole lot of kangaroo leather to the people. 345 grams of raw power. 2006, it gave us the Predator Absolute that kind of continued where the pulse had left off. But this time, you could actually remove the power pulse and the insole if you for some reason didn't like it. And also, the Absolute gave us only three Predator Swerve elements, but instead, Adidas had engineered these melted rubber stripes onto the upper to still give you a pretty good amount of grip. It was 308 grams and was pretty decent, but actually not my personal favorite. Because that probably came in 2007 in the shape of the Predator Power Swerve, which was also more or less the last of the OG Predators with the tongue. But here Adidas kind of continued, but instead introduced the tungsten powder in the insole where the weight kind of moved with you to give you even more momentum when you struck the ball. And also Adidas had these smartphone predator elements that were shock absorbing in order for the ball to stay on your foot for just a millisecond longer so you could put even more power and swerve behind it. 320 grams and an absolute treasure of a football boot. But in 2009, things changed drastically and not necessarily for the better. Adidas killed off the tongue, they killed off the kangaroo leather to go with the more durable Tauros calf leather and also they inexplicably moved the predator elements just to the top of the instep, which was really weird. They also continued the power trend with the power spine in the sole that prevented your foot from bending too much backwards and losing power. And while it was all good ideas, I didn't really like neither the fit from the burrito tongue or the boot itself that much, to be honest. On to the next one, I guess. Thankfully, the Addy Power came in to make amends in 2011. And while it did still have the tower's leather and the power spine and no side of a tongue whatsoever, it just did it better than the X. Because it had these proper rubber 3D elements to give you the power and the swerve you want, but also this big grippy rubber area to give you a bit more grip. But I could still use some more stuff on the toe box. But this was also actually the lightest Predator ever made at that point at 230 grams, thanks to the super thin sprint frame outsole. And this was a boot that I still properly love. But Adidas weren't done surprising and making big changes. And in 2012, they gave us the Predator Lethal Zones that introduced five rubber zones all over the upper for different aspects of control in the game. Now also, it introduced for the first time ever on a Predator, a synthetic leather upper called Hybrid Touch that was actually pretty damn soft. And that sat on top of a MyCoach enabled sprint frame outsole, but more on that later. Now that was then replaced by the Predator LC2 in 2013. And it was actually largely the same football boot. There was only a slight change in the shape and the structure of the rubber elements to make the boot a little less chunky and more streamlined than the first generation of the Lethal Zones. And it was also pretty light, 226 grams. Now the 2014 World Cup brought us the Predator Instinct that continued where the LC boots left off with the exact same elements that were only just made more aggressive to give you a very good amount of grip and texture on the ball. It also ditched the My Coach element because it kind of didn't really work. And also, it went back a little bit to that weighted sensation of the OG Predators, weighing 275 grams. And while it was a good boot, it was also the last Predator for a while because Ace was knocking on the door. Now, 2014 also meant the 20th anniversary of the Predator. And to commemorate that, Adidas released the Predator Tongue and the Predator Eyes. Extremely limited and you couldn't buy them anywhere, but I just thought I wanted 
to show them to you guys. And also, Adidas released the Revenge Pack, which was basically an instinct-inspired hyper-touch interpretation remake of the Predator 94, the Predator Accelerator, and the Predator Mania. And the idea was good, but honestly, the execution could have been better. But after a three-year hiatus from Predator, Adidas wanted to tease the return of the king. So they gave us well, another remake of the Mania in Hyper Touch that was better than the first one, but still just kind of okay. They also gave us the Predator Precision with a one-to-one -one remake of the OG Precision Upper. Very good, but it got better because we also got the David Beckham Capsule Collection that featured an OG Accelerator Upper combined with a Primate Sock. So, kind of fusing the old and the new, the past and the present, Adidas were ready for the future to arrive. Because the future is this, the Predator 18 Plus. <laughs> well, okay, it is a pretty big far cry from the very first Predator, but that's also okay because looking back, it's kind of clear to me that there has been a natural progression and evolution of the Predator over the years. And most important of all, the 18 Plus is still a very, very good football boot. Now, before we end here, I want to give a big shout out to Chris Kemp, aka the Pred Collective, for filling out some of the holes in our Predator collection. But going back to the boots here, if you want to know how the Predator 18 Plus performs, you should check out my review by clicking the video right down here. Also, let me know in the comment section what your favorite Predator of all times is. Make sure you subscribe to see even more cool Predator content by clicking the green bubble over my head. Leave me a like if you had a good time, and don't forget to spread the word by sharing this video with your friends. And with that said, I'm signing off. Cheerio.